What do I do? I wake up, brush my teeth. Scroll on social media. Drink my morning coffee while I rush to work. Take a second to check my bank account and budget again. I wake up, brush my teeth. Scroll on social media. Busyness. Worry. Busyness. Worry. Jealousy. Busyness. Worry. Jealousy. You might think these sins are a big deal, but to me, they seem completely harmless. And one of those things that we're going to be talking about today as we open up this harmless sin sermon is going to be busyness. And I'm going to spend some time defining that um, as we go through this. But I need for us to understand, I need us to get that God has called for us to live at a completely different pace. The rest of the world does not live at that pace. But we find ourselves living at the exact same pace as the rest of the world. It's become a cultural norm. It's become a thing that we do. It has become something that is acceptable. Although God has called something different for each and every single one of us. So I'm going to be going through some different verses today. Uh, So... um, Be with me, be hanging in there with me as we go through these different verses. I'm going to open up with Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care what, uh, that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord, uh, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or need indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Now. Prior to this passage that we're we're reading here, um, and I want us to understand the context of this particular one, all right? Contextually, Jesus is talking about hospitality, all right? If you go prior to this, you'll see that it is the the Good Samaritan. Um, Jesus teaches about hospitality to the Good Samaritan, how he cared, how he loved, how he's hospitable in the Good Samaritan. And then we see the hospitality that Mary and Martha have invited the disciples, invited Jesus to come in, and they want to show hospitality and they want to care for him. But one of the things that we see in this uh, this picture here is we see Martha in this place of busyness. Now, it's easy for us to beat up Martha in this, but let's be reminded that Martha is a woman of God. It's just this moment she finds herself in busyness. And we can go to this one because we just kind of see how she's living her life in this moment. And she becomes distracted and she misses some things. Now, I think all of us can relate to busyness. All right, we all can relate to busyness. Busyness, in other words, has become a way of life. I I was reading this thing that... uh, the Chinese, they have, they have what they call pictures of the way that their, their words are. Their words are created in images. Their image for busyness uh, is heart killer. Okay? Heart killer. That's their image, is that it kills the heart. Now, for us, what we would do, and this is how we know it's become part of our life, is if, um, if I say, hey, how are you doing? I do the same thing. Hey, how are you doing? Man, doing well, just busy. Right? That's how we would say it. That's a lot of times how we would respond. In other words, we're saying, hey, I'm doing great, but I'm killing my heart. (laughs) And in a lot of ways, it feels like that's what we should do. Right? It just feels like that's the thing to say. It's like, hey, I'm busy. Hey, I'm I'm killing my heart. I've never had anyone come up to me and say, hey, dude, I'm, I'm doing well, man. I'm just resting. I mean, I, man, I, I would want to say that. I've never said that myself. Man, I'm just resting. Praise God, thank God. I've never had anybody answer that to me before. Life has become wall to wall, busyness and hurry. 
Wall to wall. Now, what do I mean by busyness? What I'm meaning by busyness when I'm saying busyness is talking about living a life of continual go. Over and over and over and over is nonstop go over and over again. This is the pace that I'm speaking of that has become a busy life that has become part of the people's life. And this is not even the model that God gave us. God gave us a completely different model. We can look at the model that God gave, gives us at the very beginning in Genesis chapter 2, 2 through 3. It says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on, uh, uh, on it, he rested from all the work he created, um, all the all of the work of creating that he had done. God rested. Now, does God need to rest? Well, absolutely not. Okay, let's just let's, let's put, bring back to the forefront of who we're talking about. The one who has no beginning and no end. The all-powerful God who knows all, is omnipotent, who is omnipresent, the great power of this entire universe, took a rest. But he takes this rest for us. He goes, I want you to see a completely different pace of life. In other words, I've created you to live a certain way. When we don't live that way, you will feel it in your body. God modeled a way of life. God modeled a way of work and rest. Work and rest. Um, I had heard somebody say something about, I prefer to burn out than rust out. All right, man, I'm, I'm, I prefer, I'm going to go as hard as I can, and I'm going to burn myself out before I rust out. But let me understand something. Both of these, neither one of these are any good. <laughs> right? You burn out, it is no good. You rust out, it is no good. God didn't design us to do nothing but rust out. He didn't design us to do nothing but only rest and do nothing at all. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, he didn't design us to go hard and just all work. He designed us to work and to rest. Now, understand and hear me, hear me on something. Understand it's okay to have a full schedule. Jesus, in three years, did all that God had called him to do in three years. It's possible he had a, a full schedule. You think about it. Think about all that he did. But we'll see more that he took time to get away. But when we live at a pace that God did not model, we have become busy and we sin. The other thing about busyness is that business ha busyness has this way of leading us and pulling us into other sins because of the pace that we're living at. All right, let's look at this, uh, verse 40. Um, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations uh, that had to be made. Her busyness caused her to be distracted by something that was obviously there. The obvious thing that was there was Jesus, right? Jesus walks through the door. You would think that you would drop all things. Like you, you, we all probably would admit, would say, Hey, if Jesus walked through that door and, and I, it was revealed to me that it was Jesus, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to be with Jesus. But let's be honest with ourselves. We have plenty of opportunities to be with God, but a lot of times we're too busy to do them. Now, let's just talk about just some small ones that we do. All right, what about when we eat? A lot of times we're too busy just to go, God... Thank you for this food in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Sometimes we're too busy to even go, hey, God, thank you for this. 
Like, God, thank you for providing this for me. Thank you for uh, 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 giving me the money, the things I need to do. Sometimes we're just so busy that we skip that. Sometimes we're so busy that we don't even do our devotions. And they're like 10 minutes. The opportunity to be with Jesus has presented itself to us time and time and time and time again. But we're moving like this. God, I really don't have time for you. Let's let's be honest what it really means. What it really means is, God, I don't have time for you. What I have time for is what I only have time for. And God, you don't get to be in the middle of this. It makes us distracted by some of the things that are obvious. And some of the obvious things are these things that God has put for us to help us to grow. We spend our time in these devotions. These are times to be with God and to grow in relationship with him. But when we miss it. Busyness robs us of our relationships and growing in our relationships. Uh, As we look in this passage, we'll understand that Martha is furious with Mary. Uh, She's angry. She's extremely angry. Matter of fact, she doesn't even address Mary. She goes to Jesus and go, tell her to get up and get in this kitchen to help me take care of this. She doesn't even talk to Mary. She talks to Jesus. The thing about busyness is that busyness has this way of causing us to uh, do what I call um, bulldoze people. Here's what I mean. I don't have time for anything other than the things I have time for. And you're either in the way or you need to get out of the way. So what a lot of times will happen, we'll run people over. Why? Because I don't have time to do the thing that God has really called for us to do. And it's the opportunity to love on people and to care for them. No, I only have time for the stuff that I have time for. And if you're in the way, you got to get out of the way. We can find ourselves railroading people when we're in this place of business. Business has a way of driving us to believe that the only thing that is important is busyness. What is important is the things that I have to do and all the busy things that I have to do, and that is what is important. You know, I thought about this when I was was teaching this, and I, I, I thought about this. This is probably one of the easier things for us to adjust in our life, but probably going to be the hardest. Y'all think about it. God gives us an opportunity. We're going to talk more about it. He says, I care so much about you. I'm going to create a space and a time that I say, you will rest. But we don't know how to. Or we won't do them. Or we find our our schedule so packed. Or we actually, we've allowed the world to dictate how we're going to live. To be honest with it. (coughs) Business has said, business is the only space I have is room for business. You know, I would say I was addicted to busy. And before I even moved to Wichita, when I was in Tennessee, um, I was a bivocational pastor, was a full-time teacher, and I went hard. I went seven days a week, and I'm telling you, I about burnt out. And matter of fact, before I moved here, before God goes, hey, I want you to go full-time ministry, I was going to quit ministry. I was done. I was burnt out. I had no more room, no more space for anything else. It was killing me. It was beating my body up. And I was like, God, I'm ready to quit. I want to be done. And in the middle of doing that, he goes, ah, you're going to go full-time ministry. (laughs) What sense does that make? (laughs) And then when I moved here, being with Pastor Dennis, it taught me how to live and how to rest and work at the same time. As I look back at those times, one of the things I recognize is sometimes I have conversations with my wife, and she'll talk about things that the kids did, and, you know, these events, she'll she'll go, I remember that, and I don't. It breaks my heart, because I went so fast, so busy, my life was so crazy, that these moments where I am there, I don't even soak them in. There are moments in my three boys' life that I don't remember. The special moments for them. Why? Because I was just too busy. 
God goes, you know what the most important thing is? Your family. That's the most important thing that I've given you, even more important than this job as what I'm doing now. Because my family is my first ministry. But I ignored my family to even do this. Because I just stayed on this busy thing. You, you want to know another thing is you think about your marriage. A lot of the ma- problems we have in our marriage happens to be because we're just too busy. It's a good question for you. When's the last time you had a meaningful conversation with your spouse? Honestly, this, listen, I hear me. When's the last time that you just sat and talked, but you didn't talk about busy stuff? Like I, My wife and I talk, and we have to be intentional about this because here's what we'll do. Both of us have to be careful about being busy. We will go, hey, tomorrow we got to do this. What does the calendar say? You got to do this. Kid have to be here. We have to do this. Don't forget, you got to pick this up. Okay, I'll pick this up. I'll take this thing. I'll do this this way. That is the conversations that oftentimes we have. But neither do we just sit down and talk. And I'll tell you what, the first time I said, you know what? We just need to sit and talk and not talk about stuff, like, you know, things we got to do. Let's just sit and talk. Do you know because we hadn't done it, it was awkward. <laughs> now, my own wife, I couldn't just sit here and go, I don't even know what to talk about. <laughs> Sorry about that. Why? Because we've been caught in a life of busyness. So I'm going to tell you, as if you're married in here, let's be intentional about this. Let's not miss these moments with our family because of busyness. Do not let it take over your world. Now, as followers of Jesus, we all would agree that we want better relationship with God. We want better relationships with our family, with our, our friends. We want, better, we want a, a better uh, rejuvenating life in general. And the only way this is going to uh, do this is by choosing a different pace of life. So how do we do it? What is God calling for us uh, to do? In verse 42, as we're, we were reading, it said that Mary chose something different. She chose a different pace. Mary, instead of choosing the pace of business, chose to rest and be with Jesus. Now, understand, Mary was in the kitchen with Martha. If we read this passage, it would seem that she was in there with Martha, and then Jesus walked in, and she chose a different pace of business, and she chose a pace to be at the place with Jesus. But she chose a Christ-like move. All right, let's see what Jesus does in Luke chapter 5, 13 through 17. It says, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. Uh, I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, do not tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice, uh, sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleaning as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so the crowds of people came to hear him and uh, to be healed of of their sickness. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Here is Jesus at his peak, right? Everybody is coming to him. The disciples are going, yes, this is what we've been trying to do. Like everybody's here. They want to be the, the best way. I don't know how to describe it. It would be like. Um, If you guys, if we had like a, if you had a product or something that you were selling and everybody wanted it, they were taking it at full price, never mind full price, you can jack the price up and they're still going to buy it. All right, this is that moment. Everybody, it could be like with your, your, your trade, with your skill, everybody wants you. Guess what? You can charge anything you want and you can have as much uh, uh, work as you want. And this is often when what the world would tell us to do is to dig in. Like pack your schedule. Do as much as you uh, possibly can. Capitalize on as much as you possibly can. Don't breathe if you don't have to. All right. There's money to be made. There's certain things to capitalize on. This is how we would live, but we see that Jesus chose something different. He chose a different pace. He chose a pace to get away and actually be with God. Jesus was known for withdrawing. We don't know how long he withdrew. We don't know if it was a couple of minutes. We don't know if it was a full day. 
but he made time to slow down. So what does this look for us? What is God calling for us to do? All right. One of the first things I want us to talk about uh, that God is calling for us to do is to take Sabbath rest. Now we see that God at creation said, there is a Sabbath rest that I want you to take. I'm going to take it, therefore you should. What in the world makes us think that if God's going to take one that we don't have to? That absolutely blows my mind. I mean, I lived it. So don't hear me point my finger at you. I understand. I lived it. In a lot of ways, I was, did a lot more like Martha. Like, I'm doing these things for the Lord. I'm hitting it hard. I'm getting it done. And then I find myself not even keeping the Sabbath. We see that as part of the commandments. That we should keep the Sabbath. See, the Hebrew word for uh, Sabbath is Shabbat, and it means to end something. It means the end of something, the end of this work period. It's a close of this period for you to rest. Now, when I'm talking about Sabbath, I'm talking about a day of rest. Taking a day and resting. Now, understand, disciples and the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees come up to Jesus. Um, I believe it's in Mark 2. And uh, they come up to Jesus and he says, uh, uh, Jesus and the disciples are walking, they're hungry. And they, uh, in the wheat field, they just grab wheat. So you, you kids, you've grabbed like, it's just stuff off the end of a, a vine or something. So they just grab this wheat off. And so they rub it together, <laughs> blow the chaff off, and they would eat the little seeds that were there. So they were hungry. The Pharisees and Sadducees in this little moment goes, ah, uh-uh, you've broken the Sabbath. You've been harvesting. Jesus makes this statement. He goes, look, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, this Sabbath was made for you so you can rest. This is part of the gift that God gives to us as his people. But we find ourselves ignoring it. Now, I, I get it. I understand. Sometimes we don't have a full day to be able to rest. Sometimes we don't, okay? I get that. I understand that. And I think this is one of those things that we need to be praying about and going, God, help me to fulfill out what you're calling for me to do. But if you can't find a day, find some time to rest. We can't afford to ignore the Sabbath. Okay? Now hear me, hear me out. We can skip Sabbath rest if we want to. You can skip three years, you can skip four years, but I can promise you this, eventually your body's going to make you take a Sabbath rest. Why? Because we were never designed to live any other way. The, the people of the world were designed by the same creator. Therefore, their bodies will do the same thing, but they ignore that. That's why God goes, for you, I want you to live differently. I want you to live at a different pace, a place, a pace of rest and work. Now, for me, just to give you an example of how, how I do it is, for me, Friday is a Sabbath for me. I take time to rest. It, if I, I don't sleep in anymore, I'm just too old to be able to do it. It's for whatever reason I wake up. I'll call myself sleeping in, but I sleep in as late as I possibly can. Um, but I give myself time to rejuvenate from all the work that I did throughout the day. And I find some time just to really be alone and hear what God has to say. Sometimes that's fishing. You'll hear me talk about fishing. When it gets a little bit warmer, I'm going to be out fishing. Now, I know what I'm fishing. There's where God is at. He is on the lake, I can tell you, okay? Amen. Especially when you catch a big one. So I take this time and, and I rest and as I'm fishing, it's, it's interesting because God begins to speak to me in these times. My messages, he reveals things to me about messages. He reveals things about my life and then my family, some things that I've forgotten, how much he has blessed me. I find myself when I'm off of this fast pace, this fast move, things in life are so much more clear. Sometimes, you, you, well, some of us might go, well, God, I don't know, I'm not hearing from God. Maybe you're not slowing down. 
Maybe you're moving at a pace that you can't hear God. You remember your kids in the back of your, your, the parents' car when they're driving and you're on the interstate and you're trying to catch the car, but you can't ever get a clear car? Maybe that's the pace that you're at, and that's why you can't hear God clearly. You're finding a different place. Here's, here's the other thing. Sabbath is a, a sacrifice. Because guess what? There's always room to make more money. There's always room. If I just kept that one day and I added something extra to it, wouldn't it that capitalized on that? Yeah, there's a sacrifice. But here's the thing. If we do, number one, we'll be more productive in the six days that God gave us if we'll take that one day and rest. I can tell you that much. Number two, there's a place of faith of going, God, here's what I'm, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to live by your word and watch God bless. If we would live by God's word, God, this is what you called me to do. This is how you called me to live. And I know the rest of the world would look at me and say, hey, you're crazy. But it doesn't matter. I know that you are going to bless. My question for you is this. Where do you find time to rest? Where have you time, found time to rest your body? Where have you t- found time to rest your mind, to come down from that high pace that the world wants for us. The next thing is to find a quiet moment to be with God. Now, I don't know where that might be. Just find some place to get away. Mine is early in the morning. Before everybody is up, I just go and spend some time with God. This is just when I find this place, it's not hurry, there's not a a lot I have to get done or have to do. Everybody's asleep. The dogs are asleep. And I just go and I get to be alone with God to hear what he has to say. Do we have these moments in our life? to get? And, and listen, if we, would just, if we would do these two things, I'm telling you what changed your life. Maybe it's in the car as you're driving to work. You just calm yourself. Go, God, I'm I'm here. I want to hear from you. I've talked to some mothers and they say it's in the bathroom because nobody bothers them in the bathroom. (laughs) But it is a place of where at rest. It's just me and you, God. Do you have a place where you just get away to be with God? Family. The enemy wants us to beat ourselves up. The reason being is because then we can't do the things that God has called for us to do. See, one of the business is going to be the work of of the enemy. Because if he can keep you distracted by all the other stuff, then you find yourself distracted, uh, distracted from the very things that God has called you to do and live. The call for us is to pick a different pace today. And it won't always be easy, I can tell you that. Sometimes we don't even know how to sit still because we're so used to being so busy. The minute that we get a moment to rest, we don't rest because we've never done it before. But the call for each one of us is to find that place of rest. Our next step for each and every single one of us is create a Sabbath time this week. I'm going to say this to you as your pastor. I want every single one of you that is hearing these words to take some Sabbath time. You're not meant, you were not designed to live at the pace that we're living at. It will literally kill us. We have to take Sabbath time. One, God told us to. God has commanded us to live this way. And let's live that life out. So each of us find and create some Sabbath space. And if you've got to start small because that's just what you have, then start small, but do something. But get off of this pace. I can tell you that God will bless you immensely if you'll just take this time to be with him and rest the body that he's given you. Family, I... 
I don't know all the things that God has spoken in your heart. But I know he's spoken to me today. We're going to have time at this altar for you just to come and pray. And again, it doesn't have to be what we talked about today. It could be anything that God has spoken to you. Maybe you just need to pray, go to God and go help me to figure out a place in my life where I can find some, some space to rest. Maybe I'm just not doing it, God. I'm not good at that. Help me. Maybe you want to just come and pray about that. Maybe you want to pray about something completely different. But this space and this altar is going to be open for you to come and pray. Don't be afraid to come and pray. This is the space where God wants to, to meet you. Let's pray together.